welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we are going to play a deck that I actually, with the help of one of my subs, brewed up a while ago. And, well, uh, it kind of got put on the shelf because a new set came out and all this other stuff, but it's a really fun deck and there are some new pieces for it. and. It's kind of this unique toolbox. I called it Tag Team because what I like the most about it is the combination of Bishop of Rebirth and Dauntless Bodyguard. Kind of a janky little combo, in all honesty, but you play Dauntless Bodyguard to protect the Bishop of Rebirth. You can sacrifice it to make this indestructible and attack with it to get back a convert creature from your graveyard with converted mana cost three or less. Now we have a wide variety of options, but if you don't know what to get, you can just get a bodyguard back and keep it protected again. Um, another neat little kind of train you can get on uses Isarath the Awakener and Bishop of Rebirth and Dauntless Bodyguards, or at least and be careful because they do exile when this dies. So if you get back a bodyguard and sacrifice it, it exiles. But it's a neat interesting train to get back more of your graveyard. Then we also have Midnight Reaper, which can draw a card every time you go through this process, so that's pretty fun. A Johnny can also get back cheap creatures, so it's kind of a it's it's a baby graveyard recursion deck. It could also probably use the card Gruesome Menagerie, but I enjoy the card Bishop of Rebirth more because it comes with the body and can get you back more and more value every single turn and can snowball. It's a fun deck. This isn't a super competitive deck. Obviously, just killing the Bishop of Rebirth is a big problem. But the rest of our deck is designed to draw some fire and make some things happen. We can get back a bounty agent, which destroys legendary permanents if there are artifacts, creatures, or enchantments blowing up an immortal sun or something like that. There is a remorseful cleric to take out graveyards if you're dealing with a lot of Arclight Veni. There's Tithe Taker who can make things annoying. Burglar Rat can hit that last card in the opponent's hand. Dusk Legion Zealot can just get you more free cards out of the deck. Kitesail Freebooter can protect the whole situation and take cards away from the opponent and be generally annoying. Sometimes the opponent has a big thing you don't want to hit you. Orzhov Enforcer coming back over and over can keep it on the ground and away from your face. Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Seems like maybe you want to run four of them in this deck, but honestly you don't want to sacrifice your stuff that much. You really do want to build up on your board presence, but having one to take out like Carnage Tyrants and against Mono Blue this card is a real pain. So, uh, Then we have Secret Squire. Sometimes you just want to hit those land drops or have a bigger 2-3 body than the 1-1 one, one Dusk Legion Zealot. There's Inspiring Cleric. We need some life back sometimes, and in the late game, an even better way to get life back is Resplendent Angel, who can take over the game if unchecked. And then we talked about Midnight Reapers. We also have Plague Crafters, which is our pseudo removal for the deck, along with the Plague Mare, which can wipe the opponent's field if they go too low. And then three Conclave Tribunals. Get those pesky things out of there. We run enough creatures that using the Convoke is pretty good. And we have a Johnny. Like I said, he can also get the, all these creatures back or just buff them up, make some cats. Memorial to Folly keeps the graveyard theme going. Two guild gates help to fix the mana base and the rest of the deck is as you would probably expect it. So we're going to play some good old casual games, unranked, take a little break from the grind, play something a little bit different than the strongest and bestest of best of one, angry, rah-rah, smash-nash, spikes corner decks, and uh, see how it goes. Maybe we can get some good games. Bring on the next opponent. We'll go into glorious battle for nothing but pride and honor respect of our peers. We don't get to play the bodyguard on turn one unless we draw the planes, but the zealot on turn two and the option of inspiring cleric or playcrafter on three with the johnny sitting around. I can try this. We can make this work. Up against Chandra. Not the planes. And we're up against Glacial Fortress tapped for turn one. Always makes me think about Teferi's, which... Hopefully we can set up a good play crafter for it. Let's bring out the Zealot. I think that's better than getting a 2-1 with uh, nothing protected. And what do we got? We got the hero, Precinct 1. Hmm. Something tells me I'm supposed to play craft that. What do you all think? Yes, CGB. You should play craft. 
I could attack first. It would be a pure bluff attack. If the opponent blocked it, my playcrafter would be a lot worse. I got this sneaky suspicion that the opponent won't block. Free point of damage. Yes! Talk about a free roll. Talk about a free roll. Now I get to keep the three, two. Oh yeah, bluffing in free play. Living my best life. Well, we could go for the Ajani. The problem with that is an Absorb is really ugly right now. Let's try attacking with the Playcrafter, see if our opponent will flinch. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's very likely that the Kite Sail Freebooter would get countered. We could get it back next turn, potentially, of course. But we could also play Inspiring Cleric and Dauntless Bodyguard, which are much less likely to get countered at all, and they force the opponent to do something to the battlefield. Yeah, let's try it. Would you like to absorb this? No, I would not. That seems stupid. You're right, it is stupid. How about this Dauntless Bodyguard? What do I protect? I'll protect the Cleric because the life gain isn't likely to matter. But I do want the Bodyguard, I want to get it back sometime. And now the opponent's picking out what to kill. They've sat on a Mortify. They'll take out the Playcrafter. Having it in the graveyard, though, is not a terrible thing. If we had played the Freebooter, they could have Mortified in response and we wouldn't get much for it. Okay, here is Basilica Bell Haunt. I could discard the Freebooter, then play the Ajani and get it back and still have the land. Or I could discard the land and Ajani could get back a Zealot and I'd still have the Freebooter. I think I really like getting the Freebooter back, though. And we might need this land. It's a little bit greedy to discard it. A little bit. I had to take her off the top. Eh. I could also slam the Bishop of Rebirth. But I'm going to go with the Johnny. Let's see what our opponent has up their sleeve. It is good to see you fight again. We'll get you back. Deputy of Detention and Lazav. How obnoxious. Alright. Well, we didn't get anything. That's not quite what I wanted. And Deputy probably taking away the Ajani. Let's find out. That's okay. I hope you find your path. There's definitely a case for building an Esper version to run a card like Deputy of Detention in this deck. Also a Lozav could be pretty fun. So some of these cards could fit into this deck as well if you wanted to build the Esper version. All right, Surveil throws a land in the graveyard. The opponent's down to just one more relevant card. All right, there's a Resplendent Angel. That's a pretty sweet one. If we draw a land, it can take over the game all on its own, so we don't need the Bishop just yet. Let's lead with Tithe Taker. Let's see if there's... The opponent wants to use it. Let's have for, oh, for one. Not so much. Here's Resplendo. So with 4 Toughness, it's, there isn't a good attack for anything but the Flyer because of the 4 Toughness on the Bell Haunt. But if we draw a land off the top, which is probably the worst draw in the deck at this point, the Resplendent Angel can go Haywire, gaining life and cranking out 4-4s. Four the opponent counting my creatures. What nonsense is this? Here comes Kaya. What are you doing? That's really obnoxious for my deck, actually. Like, supremely obnoxious for my deck. Also a weird card to see in an Esper midrange deck that's usually very obsessed with the board. So we sacrifice this in response. We do not want it exiled. We want it in the graveyard. So Bishop can bring it back. But, of course, if Kai is allowed to live, Kai gets to eat the graveyard next turn. What do you think? Will our resplendent angel work? Only one way to find out. No fire in the graveyard to suddenly block. I'm attacking with both in case the opponent does, in fact, pull off a way to remove the angel. I wonder if that means I should attack with the Tithe Taker, too. If it dies, 
So what I'm thinking is if the opponent removes my angel, I'm going to want the 1-1 one, one flyer to make sure Kaya dies next turn, because Kaya is a real wrench in my plan, and it can tick up and match pound for pound with the freebooter. So we're going to go for it, and if I end up throwing away my tithe taker that way, that's unfortunate. The opponent has to have exactly a cast down at this stage. Because of Mortify, they can't cast because of the Tithe Taker. So, here we go. Pump it up. Pump up the volume. The volume. Pump up the volume. You better dance. watch your back from here on out. All right, Kaya down. Tithe Taker makes a 1-1. One, one. Resplendent Angel makes a 4-4. Four, four. And now we've got the Air Force. Lazav turns into a hero of Precinct 1, I'm pretty sure. Lazav, the multifarious hero of Precinct 1. What a great title. And, oh, that will be the scoop. No more, please. Bishop, unnecessary. Just our little motley crew of creatures took the day. We're on the draw. We have the Dusk Legion Zealot and a number of three drops. A Plague Mare we can't cast, but Reaper and Crafter are pretty good. Give it a try, it could get run over. It's a pretty weak opening, and the opponent... Oh, their intentions are known. Let's hope this Plague Mare gets another Black Source soon. Okay, they're either on full control or something is sticking right now, which could mean like a Pride of the Conquerors and a Macy Unicorn. More lifelink, huh? So, I drew a Memorial Folly, which enters the battlefield cast, unfortunately. I had the option to play that and have Plague Mare for next turn, but there's only one creature to kill at this point. Alright, here they come. No blocks. Opponent rocking that lifelink. That makes us the control and our opponent the beatdown. And there is a card that can take over a game, Mentor of the Meek. I wonder if my opponent will block this zealot. <laughs> that time I wanted them to block to make Playcrafter better. Alas. No such luck. So what's the play? We could play a Midnight Reaper and then chump with it and draw a card. We could play the Playcrafter and have an untapped 3-2 and take out one of our opponent's creatures. The problem is they'll, I think they'll sacrifice the Healer's Hawk, which is Plague Mare bait which we kind of want. Or we could just go for the Plague Mare now and be happy to kill one thing. And just remember, we can get the Plague Mare back later, so maybe that's a good reason to take two damage and Plague Mare while we can. Yeah, this is going to be a bit of a value fest. I don't love what's happening. The fact that that Mentor might stick around. Mm. And of course another one. Alright. Maybe I should have been a lot greedier with that Plague Mare, you guys. Okay. Opponent has a deck that is white cards I like. Fair enough. The opponent attacks with the Unicorn, I'll block. Like, easy mode. Plague Mare in the graveyard so I can get it back. But the opponent doesn't quite know that. There is a good blocker for the Healer's Hawk. Let's see if we can take something away from our opponent's hand. And then the other play is either the Zealot or the Squire. I think the Zealot is probably best. If I'm going to make that play anyway, I may as well play the Zealot now and see what I draw. It might be better than playing a Freebooter. Although I'm not quite sure what that is. Dauntless. Dauntless is good, but not right now. Dauntless can wait. It's a boot. An impassioned order is on the way, so we didn't get anything. But we have some blockers. Here we go. Life and cards for every cheap creature, and as long as that mentor sticks. And there's another one. Left. Okay then. Up to 30. We'll need to put some bodies on the board. Try to keep some... Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's also a good value engine. Ha! 
kind of decide if anything's quite worth protecting here. The Midnight Reaper is a little risky because of our life total, but I think I can get it out there as drawing more cards is probably the key to being in the game, even if our life total gets low. And let's, de let's deploy the Dauntless to protect it for now and kick it on over. Dauntless protecting Bishop of Rebirth isn't important until the Bishop actually attacks. And remember, we can sacrifice Dauntless first, then attack with Bishop, get it back to protect the Bishop. So we don't have to do it in a certain order, per se. Here's a Pride Mate, but we can block that away. It is annoying that our opponent gets to keep drawing cards, but they choose not to, so... How unfortunate. I am proud to fight by your side. I'm annoyed that you are fighting by his side. Oh, look how far you come. Yeah, we're getting blown we're getting blown out. There's no no easy way to say it. But now the opponent's turtling up. They're not attacking with their healer's hawk. They're concerned about protecting a Johnny. Ooh. Johnny could pump the Freebooter so that it could start attacking the opponent's Ajani, but that's a pretty bad deal as the opponent will turn around and crush our Ajani rather quickly. But in the meantime, that Hawk is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's not good. It's a very, very bad situation. I think what I need to do is draw Conclave Tribunal, and I don't have a lot of time to waste. So, I'm going to lead with Playcrafter, sacrificing my Dusk Legion Zealot to draw a card with my Midnight Reaper, and taking something off the opponent's board at least. Opponent's looking at their beautiful board of cards and is like, well, I don't want to get rid of any of these. They're, they're the perfect creature combo. Alright, another Reaper, not quite ideal. So Seeker Squire it is. And the land off the top so we get to keep making land drops is nice. The Midnight Reaper could attack, but the opponent can block it with the Johnny's Pride Mate. Maybe they'll be too scared to. I guess there's always a chance. Yeah, there's the block. But I thought it was worth a try. But I wanted to draw another card anyway. And try to get to the Conclave Tribunals. The hits just keep on coming. We can hope that the, the Ajani continues to make the opponent play like a turtle and hide rather than attack my life total, which is a resource right now that gets me cards, which is how I'm trying to get back in the game. And the opponent does indeed keep playing that way, giving me a chance. What to do, what to do? How do I break through? I have to have too many creatures for my opponent to block, and even then it's a pretty bad spot. I could be playing the Ajani. Yeah, we could attack through the Healer's Hawk this turn, I think. It's a pretty good call. I do want to get this Bishop down. I just don't know when that will happen. Do not fear. So we want something to have... Let's see, let's get you a buff for sure. What about the other thing? What do we want in the graveyard? I guess a Squire could, that could rumble better would be nice. So would a, a Zealot that could rumble better. These are on four. I guess having something with four power, though, could trade back really well. Yeah, let's put it out the crafter. See in yourself what I see in you. Hi -ya. See if the opponent wants to throw their hawk under the bus. They seem to really care about their Ajani. So I'm trying to take advantage of that. If I play another Midnight Reaper, I might just be dead. So I think I'm Dauntless Bodyguarding the Plague Crafter, so it... Well, I kind of want the Playcrafter dead. What do I want protected? The Reaper? Peace I have another Reaper. An so I guess I'm protecting the Playcrafter? 
so it can rumble better and then we'll end the turn anyway we got to punch a johnny which takes them off the ultimate track which i think is what they really wanted now we'll see if they now abandoning that track we'll, we'll see if they get more aggressive they also may get back the leon and vanguard because they do get to draw two cards from that which i would recommend but it looks like instead we're plussing a Johnny. I will lend you my strength. Yeah, I like getting back the Vanguard and drawing two cards and buffing your Pride Mate more. But now the opponent sees a Planeswalker, and we can tell the opponent cares a lot about Planeswalkers. So the Planeswalker is the shiny object. Oh, they changed their mind perhaps. Life total. Okay. It's on. They heard me. Life total is a resource that they can attack that draws me cards currently with the Reaper, so that's a good thing. Good thing to be attacking. Plague Mare doesn't do much. Zealot hurts me more. I think it's time to get frisky with my Reapers because my life total is getting too low. So, let's plus up you and you. Oh, you are capable of more than you assume. Oh, indeed. Attack the Ajani, or do we D up? Well, we have to get Ajani dead. Otherwise, we can't make a block here anyway, because this will be a four. I'll be going to three, possibly two. I'm in a really bad spot. But I think we have to try. And this will draw me an extra card this turn. So send him in. I probably should have put the counter elsewhere. Putting it on the Reaper was a little bit loose, especially with this Pride Mate out here. If I put it on one of these creatures, they'd rumble a lot better. And I knew I kind of wanted this to die, and the opponent had to block it anyway to keep the Ajani, so that was a bad play. Play another Reaper. Hopefully the opponent doesn't attack with too many things. Playing the Reaper might have been very bad, but at this point, I think I have to take a lot of chances. Okay. Be strong. We'll see how many creatures the opponent chooses to attack with. They certainly have lethal if they attack with enough things. What can we get back right now? Many things. Many things can come back. Okay. <laughs> opponent has set their sights on the Ajani Adversary of Tyrants after all that. I'm pretty amazed. Um, but what can you do? Wow. That card might just save my, my butt. Alright, so Freebooter's probably going to kill Ajani. We could force... Hmm. We force the Midnight Reaper to get blocked so we can gain that life. Otherwise, I and you kind of need to get it off the board, but I guess I'm at six, so it's not that bad. A Johnny could also get back a Dauntless to protect the Angel. The problem with, yeah, okay, okay. Um, but then it has to die. Let's instead do it like this. I don't really like putting the counter on the Angel because it's such a valuable card anyway. What else could be countered on you? Strength is born of struggle. So then we go you here, you here. There's our attacks. Ability, get back Dauntless. Take action. Protect the bishop. There's the block. So this protects this, so we'll sacrifice it. Draw a card. Game indestructible. Do our damage. Down goes to Johnny. Got the 4 4 Angel. And these both unfortunately come into play tapped. I really needed an untapped one there. I think what I'm going to do is we're going to sacrifice you. Get back the bodyguard. Play the bodyguard. Protect the resplendent angel so it survives the turn, so it can block the hawk. Play the other memorial of the folly, say go. Living on the edge. Our opponent certainly could have put us away. There will be no lack of comments about that when this video gets posted. But you gotta play the games that you're in. It's part of 
part of playing the casual games. It's also part of showing what interesting decks do, as opposed to playing against people who roll you all the time. Another Ajani. That is frustrating. And here are the counters. Deliver us to victory. Yeah, there's Hawk probably going after my Ajani, only to see the bodyguard step up. So let's lock. Make sure we sack the right one. Draw a card. Go to four. Protect the angel. Our opponent's up to 45. We're at four. Can we make an improbable comeback? Never an angel of their own. Oh no! Oh no! The chaos begins. All right. Uh, Dusk Legion Zealot. Okay. Okay then. Well, we definitely have to gain life, so we need to spend the six mana that way, and we need to get in there. I think that the right play is to get back. This Dauntless Bodyguard. We still need you. Protect this Resplendent Angel. Sacrifice it. Draw a card. Okay. Okay, it flies. It can block. This is good. Then we'll... I mean, we don't have to activate it till the last minute, so I'll wait for a second. Then we will get into combat. Attack that Ajani. The 3 4 gets blocked by the 4 4. That's not very good. But the Bishop of Rebirth will get back the Dauntless to protect the Bishop of Rebirth. This is already indestructible for the turn. Do we need our opponent to make a bad block or chump block it or something? Alright, go. Take that action. Protect this Bishop. And you see the cycle continue. Compassion Orator jumps on the bishop, but what will block the angel? Opponent might choose to get rid of that 4-4. Four four. Ooh. Did they forget about indestructibility? All right, well, definitely take out the, the one that makes more creatures. And here's, we got to remember to sacrifice to protect you. That's you. To life. Those Midnight Reapers. Holy crap. And now we'll gain another Angel on End Step. Now, only had a way to get the Plague Mare back, but I don't see it right now. It would be pretty good right here. Maybe we can set that up for a future turn. Let's bring out three Morseful Cleric. Which we can use in response to an Ajani activation if Ajani decides to get something out of the graveyard. Plus it gives us three flying blockers. Bring on a Vanguard. Draw two cards. Make my pride mate more awesome. But we got up to eight life because of our resplendent angels, so we're not on the ropes right now. And this board is gonna get full. I can tell you this right now, our opponent's still at 48 and we're still in the single digits. There's a long way to go. We might have to deck our opponent with their own mentor, the Meeks. We have to take these out at some point, too. Another Resplendent Angel. Good God, man. Fourteen, fourteen, Pride Mate. What is a Johnny getting up to? And a 5-5 five, five frickin' healer's hawk. Are you kidding? How will we break through? Alright, those get buffed. Yuck. Was born of struggle. Opponent still hasn't declared if they're going to send an attacker this this uh, turn. This is a six, this is a five, so I need to be buffing. Oh, 
Oh, what, what have we here? Okay, they got a little impatient, I would say. So let's try to set up some good blocks. Um, these two can block the angel. This can block healer's hawk and sacrifice so there's no life gained. This can block here, this can block here, this can make it indestructible and draw a card. This can block here, something can block the 2-2. Two -two. It's important, in my opinion, to think those things out in advance. That way you're not like scrambling and redoing in here, uh, as I've seen many people do. So, are there any changes we need to make? We have to remember to sacrifice both of these right after blockers are declared. Block. The opponent's going to order their stuff. Here is Remorseful Cleric exiling your graveyard, drawing a card. Go on without me. And then this is the Dauntless Bodyguard sacrificing to protect the Plague Crafter and draw a card. loses some stuff. They don't gain the life from the healer's hawk, which is important because that would make another creature. Oh, they gained it elsewhere. Never mind. They gained a whole bunch of life in other ways. Oh boy. So it's at four. Opponents on one card. We drew another bodyguard, which is nice. The biggest thing is a four four, so we can make a five five. I think we definitely want to pump our flyers here. You are capable of more than you assume. We definitely pump this angel. That's like a given. We can attack with some other things, but we have to be very careful about that. Um, the bishop's going to attack. What are we getting back then? We get back the freebooter to have a flying blocker or the remorseful cleric. I think those are good ideas. Does the bodyguard need to protect anything? Let's play one now and protect the bishop. Let's play another one. We don't want to double block on the resplendent angel. That would be really bad. And we'll go to combat. You here. You here. You here. Um, do we send the 4-3? I guess we may as well. Like that. We could also get our Midnight Reaper off the board, but the amount of cards we've drawn with it are really good. All right, go get in there. And let's bring back... Plague Mayor can take out the Vanguard as well as make our opponent's blocks really hard, but I like also being able to recur it post-combat, but we probably can't do that anyway with the mana that we have. So I'm going to get the Freebooter. No, the Remorseful Cleric draws a card, and I'll have the life for it. Let's get the Remorseful Cleric to put, have a flying blocker for the trip back. It also shuts down the lifelink from Healer's Hawk. Makes things a little bit more difficult, okay? The opponent says go to damage, no blocks. Let's pump the Angel to gain that life. Down with the Johnny. I am sorry. I'm sorry, dude. The Johnny's such a bro, and I keep having to kill him. And let's burglar rat their last card. It might be another Ajani based on how they played the turn. Another mentor. So we have a conclave. I could take out the angel. One, two, three, four. And that would leave me with... That would have, the opponent would have six attackers. I'd have one, two, three, four blockers at 11 life. But two of them are small. I think that's worth it. No, do not sacrifice, thank you. So we'll go with you. Actually, I probably want to play that one. You, who wants to block? Who wants to block? Actually, all this stuff wants to block. Um, What do I want in the graveyard the most? Probably not you. The four or five, probably not. I mean, it can block one of these smaller creatures, but I don't really want it to get into combat. And we'll take you off the board. And hopefully that won't be my doom, as 
I am leaving one, two, three, four, five creatures up. With a Midnight Reaper on the board, the opponent draws a land off the top, the mentors are gone. You can feel this whole thing is turning around. Here comes the Pride Mate. That's all. No cards in hand, so the Burglar being in the graveyard isn't a big deal. We definitely don't have 18 points worth of power. I think I'll just block with the Midnight Reaper since I have another one. It's kind of a free mode block. Just draw a card. Another bishop. Oh, well, nothing else. This game has showcased how this deck can like scrap and claw its way through all kinds of nonsense. Start making some of our creatures a little more threatening to go up against this healer's hawk. See it yourself, what I see. We've got protection for the angel. We've got protection for the bishop. We don't have a reaper on the battlefield to draw more cards, but it's probably... Yeah, keep the cards coming. What are we have 26. We're doing okay. You in. You in there. Probably not you, because it's too easy of a block. And you in there. Get me something. Get me something nice from my graveyard. And the opponent scoops it up. I think I would have had Plague Mare there to make the blocking more awkward. And that's the game. And that was a pretty epic game. I think I'm gonna leave it there. That was a really long game with the white deck and uh, pretty, f you know, got to showcase pretty much all the wacky things that the deck gets to do. If you like those kind of long, puzzly, board state, situation-based games, leave a, leave a like on the video and feel free to leave me a comment. Let me know. There are very different games, of course, from the I play the biggest creature and smash you, or I burn your face, or I kill everything. So, a good bit of variety for the channel. I also enjoy this deck. It's, it's sort of like I have a puzzle every game to solve, but it's all based around creature combinations, which makes it a little unique. Uh, not quite a birthing pod deck, but something else. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Let's talk about the War of the Spark booster box giveaway on FlipSideGaming.com. Promo code CGB. If you use that promo code CGB for 10% off your order at flipsidegaming.com between now and May 6th, you will be entered in a drawing just for those supporters of my show to win an entire booster box of War of, War of the Spark. So that's really cool that Flipside Gaming's doing that. It's really cool the amount of people who use that promo code uh, to support the channel and purchase their magic cards. And remember right now, you can pre-order War of the Spark or Modern Horizons on FlipsideGaming.com. Use that CGB promo code, get 10% off, and possibly win an entire booster box of War of the Spark. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, or leave a comment. You can also support the channel on Patreon for special perks. Links are in the description. Our sponsors are HauntedFlower.com and FlipSideGaming.com. Haunted Flower sells officially licensed MTG apparel and accessories, and Flipside Gaming sells MTG cards and supplies. You can save 10% on either site with the promo code CGB, and it supports the channel at the same time. See you next time for another day in the arena. For now, it's me, it's CGB, signing out.